and welcome to Managerial Accounting. In this segment, we will be looking at a process costing environment. Let us consider what to expect within process operations. Typically, one would see the production of homogeneous goods that are mass produced and that are very similar in nature. The goal here is low differentiation and as a result, the processes are standardized. Within this type of environment, we see the production of tennis balls, we might see milk or perhaps juice, chocolate or crunch bars. It is also appropriate to service organizations. The logistics within companies such as the post office or Amazon benefit from the efficiency that comes from streamlining operations. What should we expect within a process operations? We typically would see several departments. Because of this, it is characterized by having many working process accounts. If we were to contrast a job cost environment to a process cost environment, here are some of the differences and similarities. They share the same product cost. However, within a job cost environment, heterogeneous products are either completed on an individual or a batch basis. And there's typically just one work in process account. Within a process cost environment, however, typically the cost focuses around the individual processes and the measures of the job are on an equivalent unit of production basis. There are typically several work in process accounts. As we shift, we'll focus then on the key learning objective within a process operations environment, and that is the equivalent units of production. The equivalent units of production uh, represents the number of items that could have been started and completed based on the cost within a period. Here's an example of that. If a company started 5,000 units in production, but only completed those items 30%, then the equivalent units of production would be 1,500. With that said, it's important to note that the equivalent units of production may differ for direct materials and conversion costs. Why is that the case? Direct materials are typically transited into production prior to conversion costs. As a reminder, conversion costs consist of direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. So typically, the amount that's completed based on both of these elements would differ. There are two approaches that are used to compute the equivalent units of production, the weighted average and FIFO. We focused on the weighted average approach to compute the equivalent units of production. This approach only involves four steps. The first is to identify the flow of units. The second is to compute the equivalent units of production. The third is to compute the cost for equivalent units of production. And then the fourth is to extend those costs and to reconcile our initial product cost to our cost when applied to a per unit basis. Let's look at an example. Let's assume that Accounting is Fun, Inc. had the following data. There were beginning balances appropriate to direct materials and conversion costs. There were also costs that were added during the period. And the total of these two categories was $2,112,750. I'd like for you to take a second just to jot down that number. We'll reference that in just a second. Let's move then to step one. Step one is to reconcile the appropriate amounts that were in our beginning inventory plus what was transferred in to our ending inventory plus what was transferred out. If we were to take our beginning work in process and we were added to it, whatever units were started during that particular period of time, that would give us the total units that were in process. At the end of the period, if we were to take the total units that were transferred out and add to it the total units in ending work in process, the total units should equal to that of the beginning plus what was transferred in. Once these items are reconciled, we can appropriately move on to step two. Step two is computing the equivalent units of production. The equivalent units of production is equal to the equivalent units that's completed and transferred out plus the equivalent units that are in work in process. Let's look at this example. If AIF, Accounting is Fun, Inc., had 300,000 units that needed to be converted into equivalent units of production, Let's assume that it's 250,000 were complete 
but 50,000 were partially. The next question then is, what percentage was complete as to direct materials and what percentage was complete as to conversion costs? Assume that information indicates 125%. Based on that, we can compute our equivalent units of production for direct materials and conversion costs separately. When we look at the amount that was transferred out of 250,000, if they were complete, that means that they were complete as to direct materials to conversion units. So our total equivalent units for 250 complete products would be 250,000 respectively. When we look at ending work in process, however, we notice that direct materials was 100% complete for 50,000 units. So our equivalent units of production for direct materials is 50,000. For direct labor, however, it was 25% complete. So our equivalent units of production for conversion costs would be 12,500. With that said, when we sum our direct materials and our conversion costs, we have the total direct materials equivalent units of production of 300,000, but our total conversion costs equivalent units of production of 262,500 units. With step two completed, we can now move on to step three, cost per equivalent units of production. Whenever we say cost per, we're dividing a total cost by some basis. In this case, we are dividing our total production cost by our equivalent units of production. So let's look at our direct materials and conversion cost categories. Our direct materials and conversion costs appropriately are separated. Beginning work in process and cost transferred in during the period totaled 900,000 and 1,212,750 respectively. When we divide our total cost of production by our equivalent units of production as computed in step number two, we would be able to determine what is the cost per equivalent unit. So 900,000 divided by 300,000 units is equal to $3 equivalent cost per unit. And conversion appropriately is $4.62 per unit. If you recall, 250,000 units were complete as to direct materials and conversion costs. So if we multiply 250 by our appropriate cost per equivalent unit, $3 times 250, $4.62 times 250,000. Our total cost of units completed will then essentially be $1.9 million. Now we can look at our cost in ending work in process. Well, that's fairly straightforward as well. We computed 50,000 equivalent units, so we multiplied that by $3, and we computed 12,500 equivalent conversion cost units, so we multiply that by $4.62. Our total cost in ending work in process is 207750 At the beginning of this example, I asked you to write down a number. You'll find that that number, $2,112,750, is equal to the number that we just computed using the weighted average approach. Why don't we look at this side by side? At the beginning, we looked at our total costs without any reference to equivalent, equivalent units. We found that our total production cost was $2,112,750. But when we computed our equivalent units of production and our cost per equivalent units, and we multiplied that out, we found that our totals actually equaled. We got that by multiplying our equivalent direct materials and our equivalent conversion cost amounts by the equivalent units that were completed and that were in ending work in process. To sum up, the weighted average cost approach has four steps. We first reconcile the flow of units. Second, we compute the equivalent units of production. Third, we compute the cost per equivalent unit. And then the last step is to reconcile the cost as indicated in this slide. With that all stated, let us review the process operation system as a whole. We begin with three product costs, raw materials, labor, and factory overhead. Within this process, raw materials and direct labor are transferred into work in process, but indirect materials and indirect labor is transferred into factory overhead. We apply some of that factory overhead into our work in process, but it's important to remember that we may have other overhead costs that we incur as well. 
At some point, the work in process within Department A is transferred to work in process in Department B. And appropriately, we may have additional labor, material, and factory overhead costs that's transferred into that department. At some point, once that process is completed, those items are transferred into finished goods inventory and subsequently, hopefully, sold to our customer within a short period of time. We reduce our finished goods inventory and record cost of goods sold on the income statement. The process cost flow is similar to a job cost purchase raw materials inventory. We transfer raw materials into production. Direct materials would go into work in process department A, but indirect would go into factory overhead. We add labor. Direct labor would go into work in process department A, but indirect would go into factory overhead. We will then apply overhead appropriately based on the predetermined overhead rate, and we would actually record actual overhead cost. Once the items are completed within work in process department A, they are transferred to work in process department B. At that point, once these items are completed, they are then transferred into finished goods inventory and are available for sale to the consumer. Once they are available for sale and the consumer purchases those items, we reduce finished goods inventory and record the cost of those goods on our income statement as cost of goods sold. And then the final step is to reconcile our actual factory overhead to the amount that we applied based on our predetermined overhead rate. The difference between these are appropriately recorded in our cost of goods sold unless the company determines that it wants to allocate it across the three inventory account. Whatever the case, this completes the process. Thank you for joining me on process costing. I hope that you'll join me again for additional managerial concepts and principles. See you soon.